Hi everyone. As we know, worldwide we have two main frequencies. The 60 Hertz that is used in North America, Brazil, Japan, and Saudi Arabia, and 50 Hertz which is used in the rest of the world. The question is, if I design a transformer to work in a 50 Hertz system, can I use it in a 60 Hertz system and vice versa? And to answer this question, we need to start from the fundamental, the basic transformer design formula, which is the voltage per turn is equal to 4.44 times the frequency times B, the flux density times A, the cross-section area of the core. So let's first understand this formula. And then let's try to understand from where it comes, how we derive this formula, and then use that formula to basically answer the question. Now, the transformer has, as we know, primary and secondary. We apply voltages to the primary and the secondary voltage is induced. So I know in advance what will be the rated voltage in the primary and in the secondary. So I select the number of turns so that I will have a voltage per term suitable to my insulation system between the turns. So this is something very important. And this voltage per turn is exactly the same for both the primary and the secondary. Then we will have this weird constant 4.44. We will see from where this uh, constant comes. Then F is the frequency, and that is the topic of our uh, video today. We have basically two frequencies. We have 50 and the 60 hertz. Then we have the flux density. Okay, The flux density B is basically, as we know, a famous curve we call the BH curve, something like this. So this is your B and this is your H. Now we see that a certain value of H, we have saturation to the B. And we don't want to select B such that the transformer go into deep saturation because this will cause overheating for the core. So basically what we do, we try to work at the edge of the saturation usually a value between 1.7 to around 2.0 Tesla. That is a typical values for the design of the transformer. The question is why we want to go near the edge of saturation? Because B times A is the flux. So as I increase B, I reduce A, which is the cross-sectional area of the core. Okay. And for the best interest of the manufacturer to reduce this as much as they can, because this is material, you reduce the cross section area of the core, the size of the core, the size of the tank, everything will be reduced. So that will reduce the cost of the transformer. So the best for the best interest of the transform manufacturer is to reduce this core cross section area. So we try to work near near the edge of the flux density. Now, this is the understanding of this formula, but let's first try to know how we derive this formula. So starting from the flux, we have to work with a, basically a sinusoidal flux, a time varying flux. So it is has a peak value and it's a sine omega, omega t. Now we know that the voltage is basically for a coil, which is a transformer winding, is equal to N d phi by dt, which is equal to N d phi by dt. We'll take the derivative of this, which is equal to omega times phi m cosine omega t. Now, as we know, we work more in RMS value, not peak value. So your VRMS will equal to in omega and this will be your flux divided by root root 2. So take n to the other side so the voltage per turn is equal to omega is 2 pi f times the flux divided by root 2. Now 2 pi divided by 
root 2 is this weird number. So this is equal to 4.44 times the frequency times the flux. But what is the flux density? The flux density basically is equal to the flux divided by A. So the flux is equal to B times B times A. So that is how we derive this formula. Now, having this background, let's answer our question. And let's start. If we have a 50 hertz transformer and we use it in a 60 hertz system. So now when I design a transformer, a is now fixed. I cannot play with A. A is the cross-sectional area of your of your transformer core. Voltage per turn, I don't play with it. Number of turns is fixed. The voltage apply is fixed. So this is fixed, and this is also fixed. Now, when I increase the frequency from 50 to 60 hertz, what will happen to the B? B, the flux density, will be reduced. Is this good or bad? Of course, good. Why? Because we were near the, the, the knee of the saturation. Now I reduced B, so I will be away from the saturation, which is something good. Okay, so this is, is acceptable. However, if we do the opposite, if we have the transformer originally designed at for 60 hertz system, now I am not in I'm reducing the frequency, and since everything else is constant, the flux density will increase. And now, depends on the initial value, if we are very close to the saturation, now we are pushing the transformer deeper and deeper in saturation, and that will cause some overheating of the transformer. Now, if you are working in a conservative design, you might be able to use that, but you have to know what is the value of the flux density. So generally speaking, we cannot use a transformer in 60 hertz system to be used in 50 hertz because we know now that most of the manufacturer will push the flux density to the maximum so that they can reduce the core so that they can compete in the, in the market.